my YouTube friends. Today I want to compare two live streaming platforms, OBS Studio and Prism Live Studio. I think you're going to be as surprised as I am about how these two stack up. We have a lot to cover, so you know what? Let's get to it! Likes and comments are super easy things that you can do to help push this video to a wider audience. So take a second down below and let me know how I'm doing. And while you're there, if you're not subscribed, please do. It really does help me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. Now in order to compare these two products, I'm going to be using a fresh install of OBS with no plugins at all. There is of course a lot of support for OBS that would add all kinds of features and functionality to the product. But for this comparison, I wanted to show what each one could do right out of the box fresh. On the surface, both OBS and Prism Studio share basically the same layout. You've got your preview right here in the center on both of these. You've got scenes, sort Courses, audio mixer and scene transitions and controls down here on OBS whereas on Prism Studio the last two are kind of mixed into a little bit of the UI but you still have your scene sources and audio mixer down here now Prism has multiple ways to get into settings from this right here right here you can get into settings in OBS, you have your settings right down here with a really simple menu as well. So you can get into settings by clicking here, or you can also get to it from up here and going into settings like that. So there are a couple different ways in OBS. As far as the scene transitions, they do exist in Prism. That menu just happens to be right here. On either one, you can grab any one of these and move it around to place it in different locations if you would like and resize them, of course. You can do all that right here in OBS as well. I can move scenes and sources and all these around, resize them up. Now you'll also notice in Prism that you have this menu menu over here on the side and there's chat and alerts and all kinds of other features over here that we'll cover in a little bit but essentially the layouts for both of these products are exactly the same and pretty easy to navigate let's go ahead and start this compare in OBS and we're just going to add a camera so we can show you the differences between adding a camera on each one of these go to video capture device we'll just drop this down and select our cam link you can see we've got deactivate and configure video and default device and all that stuff and I'm gonna go ahead and use a custom audio device to make sure that it's capturing my audio from the cam link and click OK and there we go so that's how you would add a camera in OBS and we're gonna add the same camera so we've got a scene here we just click the plus and we're going to go to a webcam video capture device right here and click OK you can see that basically all of the same items are here you've got your deactivate and your configure video Video and all that sort of stuff we'll go down here use custom audio device and we'll select our cam link and boom we've got our audio and our video the procedure is nearly identical in fact if we right click here and we go to filters you can see there are effect filters where we have all of these right here and you have audio filters where we have all of these right here in prism studio when we right click and we go to filters you are going to notice that essentially we have the exact same filters in both programs there really isn't any difference in adding a camera but there are some significant differences in prism for things that you can actually do with your camera so let me show you a couple of those things right now so built into prism studio is something called the prism camera and if we select that we're going to add the camera just like we normally would so we're going to select our cam link and we can come down here and use our custom audio device and we have it right there but we do have this virtual background thing right here, which if we click on that, will allow us to remove our background so we can add video footage of our own or some sort of image or background to it. Or they have all kinds of video footage or backgrounds that you can add right here. So this will blur out the background, which I think is really cool. Because if you're looking for that bokeh effect, but you just have a webcam, <laughs> well, this is going to give it to you. And let me show you what I mean. I can go and remove the background. I can go to my and select a desired image. So you guys will be pretty familiar with this. There we go. And we'll select that. So now we have my background. And, you know, if we want to blur that out and give it a little bit more of a bokeh effect, 
Well, there you go. That is the look that most people are actually looking for. But Prism Studio gives you the ability to do this right out of the box. So now when we just click OK, and there we go. So is it the perfect green screen? No, no, but none of the green screen plugin options for OBS are any better than this really. Now the other thing that you can do with it is you can go over here if you're using the prism camera and select this beauty effects. So you just select which prism camera you want if you have multiple cameras and you can turn these on and you can see it will kind of adjust the way that my face looks. <laughs> it's pretty subtle but it does it. And then you could go down here and adjust each of the individual things. It's something else pretty cool to play around with and a little bit of fun. And you can obviously save your custom looks and all that kind of stuff. And I have no doubt that this is going to continue to just get better and better and better as time goes on. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the text tool. So I'm gonna come over here into OBS and we'll click plus. And we've got this text GDI. Put your text in here and you can select the font from anything that's pretty much on your machine and of course a collection of fonts that they have loaded in here. You can select the size of your font, make it as big or as small as you would like. And then if we come down here, you can also have it read from a file if you wanna read text from a file. So other things that we can do with the font can transform the text so we can make it all uppercase, lowercase, or however you want it. We can change the color of the text and we can add a background to our text. Just increase the opacity. Right now the background is black. We can align our text left, right, center, and also a vertical alignment. We can show an outline on our text if we like. We can make that outline whatever color we choose. We can also change the size of that outline, and we can change the opacity of the outline. We can actually add a gradient to our text if we like. So we've got the yellow going to white. We can make the yellow go to green if we want. Very, very cool. We can change the gradient direction. And then we can also go into filters and we can scroll the text by using this. And there we go. Now Prism Text works completely different. So if we click this plus and we go to our text template, click OK. And you can see we have all kinds of other types of texts. So if you wanted just your simple text, we can put hello in here and we can create the same kind of text that we had in OBS. So it also uses all of the same types of text. You can use the font. You can have your font be bold or normal or however you want it. You can change your font size right here. You can change your box size for your text right here. You can change the height on the box size as well. You can modify where your text is aligned, make it all capital letters, all small letters, and we can go down here to color settings. So we can change the color of our text. We can add a background to our text if we like, and we can add an outline to our text and make it whatever color we choose and we can adjust the thickness on that outline as well. So this does not have the gradient, but if our text has motion and that sort of stuff, we can set all of that up as well. And we can go into filters, of course, and we can use the effect filters and scroll our text just like we can in OBS. So there we go. But there is just so much more that we can do with this. So we can go in here we have all of the same detailed settings that we would have on the regular text, but it also adds animation and all that sort of stuff. So we can add a second line of text. We can slow our motion down quite a bit. There we go. And we can place this anywhere we want on the screen. So if we go into properties, you can see that there are busloads of different templates that we can use to animate our text there's also social media stuff that make it real easy to put social media stuff on your screen. You can caption things so it has built in lower thirds that you can select. And if we go in there, you can obviously change all of the details. This is really really awesome. And that's just one of the templates for caption. And then of course we have elements where we can add all 
kinds of cool stuff. So we've just got this right there. You can go in here and change your font. All the same stuff that you had before. So that is the text tools in Prism Live Studio. It takes the original OBS text tools and takes it to a whole new level. It is awesome. Now this is what you guys might be used to seeing for my live stream. What we're gonna do is add a browser source in each of these so that you can see how it works. And to do that, I'm just gonna go to browser and we're gonna go ahead and put our source in here, which I got from Stream Elements, just so you know, that's what I use. And we'll put our resolution in here for what we want it to be. And we're gonna go ahead and control the audio because this does have audio. And there we go, after a couple seconds, you can see everything populates. Let's go see how this works in Prism Studio. We're just gonna click the plus down here under sources, and we're going to go over here to web click OK and then we'll put our link in here as well and we want this to be 1920 by 1080 we want to control it via the mixer so we can do our sounds and that's really all we need boom and as you can see it populates everything let's go and check and make sure that they both work and we want to emulate a subscriber event kick it off we'll go back into obs and there we go you can see that it does simulate our subscriber event and we'll kick off our subscriber event we'll go back into prism and there you go you're going to get your alerts exactly the same in Prism as you're going to get them in OBS. So all of that stuff works just fine. So now that we've pointed out some shared pieces that have some differences, let's point out ones that are exactly the same. So if we click this plus here, audio input capture, audio output capture, color source, display capture, game capture, image capture, image slideshow, media source, scene, and window capture all basically work exactly the same as well as the group feature that's listed here. But Prism Studio has a lot more things that you can actually do. All of the stuff that's in OBS is listed right over here. It's all exactly the same and it functions exactly the same, but you're gonna notice this one right here, Application Audio Capture. Now, Application Audio Capture is a plugin that you can get in OBS that's built right into Prism Studio. And it allows you to separate out audio from different sources. Like if you wanted to add a game and you wanted to add Spotify audio or anything like that, well, you can separate out all those pieces of audio. And that's something that's included in Prism Studio, which is really cool. But we haven't really touched much on all of these things over here on the right. Prism Mobile, we're not gonna talk about much, but it allows you to basically import anything from your phone right over your local network. So if you wanna import the screen on your phone to play a game on it, you can do that. If you wanna import or use the camera on your phone, you can do that. We've already talked about how cool the text template is, but there's also Prism Chat, which gives you the ability to add the chat right into your stream. And you can select from different styles of chat right here here, change up the font size, click OK, and put that chat wherever you want. And then, of course, when you're chatting, well, that's built in. It's going to appear right on your screen. We've got Prism Sticker, Prism Giphy, and a music playlist, which allows you to add music to your live stream just by adding songs that you want right here. You can show the music information on the screen. You can play it continuously and all that kind of stuff. You can even add filters to adjust the sound the way you want it. Click OK, and now that music will be playing and anything that you play will have the information right here on the screen as well. You also have the audio visualizer, which is something super cool. You can have it set up from your video web capture device audio. If you have another piece of audio in there like music, you can have it do that as well. You can change the settings as to how wide you want it, how many pixels, the height, the bounce speed, all of those things that you can only do with plugins in OBS. Well, you can do it right here directly in Prism Studio. If we go in here, we can also use the background template, which I think is so absolutely cool. So what we can do is go with something like this, and that's our background. So let's move our webcam in front of our background, and we'll just shrink it down a little bit. And then we can put our Prism Chat in front of our background. So now we have a cool little screen. You can put whatever we want, some text or something like that. But it goes even farther than that. So let's see, did we use the Prism Cam? No, we didn't. So let's remove this and we'll add our camera with the Prism Cam instead. So now 
We have our background removed. We are smaller right here. And look at that. We've created an epic scene really simply using just tools that are built right into Prism Live Studio. Oh, and by the way, you can use more than one background and they have some that are transparent. So if I select background templates right here and we go in here, I can scroll all the way to the bottom and we can add a little bit of a snow effect. And you can see the snow effect goes over top of me. It goes over top of the chat. It adds some depth. The other thing that we can do is this clock widget, which is another thing that's built right in. So if we're trying to build some sort of a countdown timer for our screen for any purposes whatsoever, you have a bunch of different types of countdown clocks that you can choose. And then you can go into detailed settings and it can be your current time, your stream time, some sort of timer, that you set up or even a stopwatch if you're doing like a speed run or something like that. And depending upon which template you select, you can also go in here and adjust your fonts if you like to whatever fonts you want to use. So I haven't even really started to talk about the things that you can do with what's over here. Right here you can pop this out and your chat for your live stream is going to be right in here. Right here if we pop that out, your alerts for any kind of things that you get an alert for, super chat or something like that. They're gonna show up right in here. I love this. We can basically draw anything we want on the screen. So let's say we want some arrows. Well, we can do that. We'll go down here and select the pinky color and boom, there we go. We've got some arrows on the screen. We can select boxes. We can change the colors of any of these or we can select the eraser and erase them. So if we wanted to put a box around our chat, we could do that. It's really this simple. And there we go. So now we have a box around our chat. Just the ability to draw on the screen and it can be any kind of drawing that you want. So if you're trying to do a tutorial and you wanna annotate something, you can easily do it. The next one would be our Giphy tool, which allows you to add all kinds of really cool things in there. We'll just select one of these here. We'll put this one on the screen and there you go and we can shrink it down, put it anywhere we want. We can actually have these triggered with hotkeys if we want. We can turn them on and off. So that is what the sticker looks like. We also have the Giphy right here, where we can add GIFs to our live stream. These can be turned on and off using hotkeys as well. Now on top of all those awesome features, Prism Live Studio will allow you to multi-stream right out of the box. But not only that, it has all of the profile and scene collection stuff that we've come to expect from OBS Studio. And the best part is it's automated. If you come down here to the exclamation point and you wanna to stream to a certain platform, you can just apply now and it will change all of your settings specific for that platform so you don't even have to go into settings and play around with it. It does it all right there for you. Now a large number of these features are available in OBS as plugins, absolutely. But a lot of those plugins are actually more difficult to set up and use than what you get built into Prism Studio. One of the places where streaming tools designed to compete with OBS usually come up short is in the efficiency department. So let's compare how efficient Prism Live Studio runs as compared to OBS with my live stream assets. Here we are in my main screen in OBS and what I'm gonna do is open up the stats window right here. And this shows that we are using a little over 4,000 in memory and we have a 2.7 CPU usage, which is really, really light, really good, really easy on the computer. Let's flip over here into Prism and we can look at the same thing from the main screen, but it is using 17 and a half to 19 of the CPU. We have a lot of GPU usage as well and almost double the memory usage. So let's switch over to the tutorial screen and see how that changes. We've got a 21 to 18 or so and 12% in the GPU, about the same memory usage. And when we flip over here into OBS and we'll go into our tutorial screen and we'll bring up our stats window, we have about the same CPU usage, a little more, about four to three to four percent and about the same memory usage, which is about half of what Prism is using. So this is definitely an area where Prism could use some improvement. It is a little bit of a heavy running platform, which means you're gonna need a more powerful machine to actually run it. In fact, it's using almost double the amount of memory 
that OBS is using, which probably explains why it's using so much CPU and GPU. So this, in my opinion, is definitely an area where Prism needs a little bit of work. I would definitely like to see it a lot closer to the small frame that OBS uses, so it's that much more efficient and makes it easier to use all of these amazing tools that it has. So what are my thoughts on OBS versus Prism Live Studio? Well, for a new person getting started in live streaming, Prism Studio is the way to go. It has so many built-in tools and features to create amazing live streams really easily. And the setup tools will make sure you don't have to know all the settings to just go live. Plus, the fact that it's not as efficient as OBS won't be as much of a factor because generally a beginner is using a simpler stream. Now for longtime veterans, there are a few things missing in Prism that some may find really difficult to let go. The Move Transition plugin, and at least for me, the Stream Effects plugins for the dynamic masks and the mirror source, well, I don't live stream without those. The lack of efficiency for larger, complicated streams may also be a big consideration. But you know what? At the end of the day, I was absolutely blown away by Prism Live Studio. It's a lot more than an OBS wannabe, and they are committed to making it better all the time. In fact, I won't be surprised if the Move Transition, Mirrored Sources, and Dynamic dynamic masks aren't part of the software soon. I just hope that although it's not as sexy to work on as new features, the efficiency of the engine really sees some improvement over the next few months. It is so nice to have options and new streamers especially should really rejoice on this one. Prism Studio really does cut a new live streamer's learning time in half because it does so much for you. If you want to see a deeper dive into Prism Live Studio, you should check this video out. Big thanks to today's sponsor, Prism Live Studio. You can check out their links and the links to all the other sponsors that support this channel in the description below under the heading Sponsors. Prism Live Studio is totally free and I couldn't possibly do this without sponsors like them or you. So thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.